So in this video we're going to look at how the oxidation reactions are actually carried out in the in the lab. So I've got this rather complex looking apparatus here. I'll just talk you through what each bit is. So the first thing to point out is this we've got this round bottomed flask here and you can see that it's um, bright orange so we've got the acidified potassium dichromate inside that flask. That's our oxidizing agent and we've also got an alcohol in there. This piece of apparatus here is what we call a condenser. Essentially it's two glass tubes in one. We've got a central glass tube running right through the, the middle of the apparatus and wrapped round that is a second glass tube which is going to allow a flow of cold water. It's going to come in at the bottom here and it's going to flow up and out at the top. Now this will surround the inner glass tube and you'll see the purpose of that once we get the experiment underway. So this is called a condenser. I'm just going to turn the tap on now and you can watch it fill up. So watch it at this part here. Just slowly turn the tap on. You see there's the water and now we have a flow of water, steady flow of water, through the outer glass tube. So obviously to make this reaction take place we need a source of heat. So I've connected a, a very small Bunsen burner, a micro burner, and I'm going to position that underneath the flask and we're going to heat up the contents of the flask and watch what happens. So you can see we've got the classic colour change there from orange to green. So an oxidation reaction has taken place inside this flask. So we're going to explain now what the purpose is of the condenser in a vertical position. Now the condenser in the vertical position is known as the reflux position and we can control the product that we get from this reaction by positioning the condenser in either reflux position which is what we've got set up at the moment or the other position that I'll show you after this is called distill or distillation position. So if we have a look at what's going on inside this flask, the reaction's obviously taken place. Now inside this flask I had a primary alcohol. So we know from a previous video that primary alcohols are oxidised twice. They are first oxidised to aldehydes and then the aldehyde is further oxidised to a carboxylic acid. So what's been happening in this flask is the aldehydes being produced. Now the aldehydes are very volatile liquid, very, very low boiling point, and it evaporates very easily. And obviously the only route it's got is to travel up through the condenser. Now because the condenser is constantly um, surrounded by cold water, remember the cold water comes in at the bottom, out through the top, if you watch closely, sort of roughly here, hopefully you'll be able to see drops of liquid running back down into this flask. So what's happening is as the aldehyde's produced, it evaporates, but because this cold water is cooling it back down into a liquid, it condenses and falls back into the flask where there was more oxidizing agent. And so the second oxidation takes place. So by using the reflux position, we generate the second oxidation product, the carboxylic acid. The definition of reflux is the continuous evaporation and condensation of a volatile substance without loss of any product. So you can see there the top of the condenser is open and that's because none of the vapour can escape because it condenses before it gets anywhere near the top there. 
Right, I've set the apparatus up differently now. It looks very, very different. This is what we call the distillation setup. So instead of having the condenser in a vertical position, we have the condenser on this angle here at the side. We've got a thermometer at the top here, and that's sealed, so it creates um, a seal at the top there, so none of the vapour can escape out of the top. And the bulb of the thermometer is deliberately positioned just where this adapter arm moves over to the right there. So like I've just said, the condenser is now in a different position and we have um, another flask here to receive the product of the reaction. So I'll set this away and we'll watch what happens. First thing I'll do is turn the water on. So again, the water is connected at the bottom of the condenser. So this tube here, you can't see it on the video, is going to go to the cold water tap. And this tube here is just in the sink as well to allow the water to flow out. So we'll just fill it, fill up the condenser slowly and watch the water fill up there. So it's going in from the bottom, there it is, and out at the top. So it's much more efficient cooling when you send the water in at the bottom and out at the top. Again in the flask we have um, the primary alcohol and the oxidizing agent and hence the orange colour there. So the acidified potassium dichromate is in there with the primary alcohol. So you can see I've lit the Bunsen there so we'll get it under the blue flame and we'll start to heat. So you can see we're getting the first signs of bubbles there. I'm holding the Bunsen so I've got more control over the, the heat. Nothing's gone green yet, so the reaction hasn't really started yet. We're just getting to the right amount of heat for this to work. So you can see now it's, um, it's starting to go green and it's bubbling away quite nicely there in a reasonably controlled manner. I've not got hold of the Bunsen anymore. Now what we need to concentrate on is what will happen as a result of the condenser being in this different position. So remember when we had the condenser in the vertical position, the volatile aldehyde that was produced wasn't able to escape, so it rose up the condenser and then because it was cold around the outside of the condenser, it dropped back down again. In this setup, in distillation, that's not the case. So the aldehyde, as it forms, you can see little bits of vapour condensing on the top of the flask there. Eventually, the vapour will reach to the, this part here, and its route out will be down the condenser. So hopefully, when we give it a bit more time, we'll start to see some product forming in the flask on this side. I think we're going to get our first drop of product. There it is there. So here's the product coming through now. I'll zoom in on the receiver flask in a moment. But we definitely got some product coming through there. I think there's another droplet coming down now. Yep, you can see it. Definitely see it. I'm looking through the lens now. There it is. So the reaction's working and we're getting our product in there. So what is going to be inside this flask is the next question. So remember we started off with a primary alcohol inside the flask. Is it being oxidized once or twice? That's the question you've got to ask yourselves. And of course with distillation apparatus, the, there's only one oxidation taking place. And so we don't get the carboxylic acid formed because the aldehydes taken out 
of the reaction because of the position of the condenser. And so what should be in here is aldehyde. Now because this has been formed by a process called distillation, the technical term for the liquid inside this flask is the distillate. Okay. So I've just zoomed in there on the receiver flask and you can see every now and again we get some clear there, some more there, some clear product, some distillate, some aldehyde formed. Here it is. Must be slightly stuck. Here it is coming now. You'll be very, very excited when this drop comes out. There it is. Excellent. Now, with secondary alcohols, it's not it doesn't really make any difference whether you use reflux or distillation because there's only one oxidation possible, and so the both methods would produce the same product they'd both produce a ketone. The preferred method would be reflux and that's because reflux makes sure that all of the reactant is converted into the product. So any reactant that evaporates up here in reflux it would just drop straight back down and be reintroduced to the oxidizing agent. We'll just quickly have a look at the equations that accompany the reflux and distillation processes. Remember this is only relevant for primary alcohols because secondary can only be oxidised once anyway and tertiaries can't be oxidised at all. So we've got a primary alcohol here, we've got one, two, three carbons, so that's prop. The OH is on this carbon here, so that's propan one all. The carbon with the OH on, so the, the hydroxyl carbon, is only bonded directly to this carbon here, so that's why it's primary. So if we reflux this, remember we're going to get both oxidations. And so the aldehyde would form first, but then it drops back into the flask because of the vertical condenser. And the aldehyde would then react with the oxidizing agent and form the carboxylic acid. So there's the equation. So you can see there we've made the carboxylic acid, CH3CH2COOH, so that's propanoic acid. Um, because two oxidations have, have taken place, we need two moles of oxidizing agent. The water is only produced in the first oxidation, so we only need one mole of water in this equation. So we have a look at distillation now as a point of comparison. Same primary alcohol. What are we going to make? Well, as soon as the volatile product, the aldehyde forms, it's taken away from the reaction flask and so we only get one oxidation and therefore we're only going to produce the aldehyde. So there's the equation completed. Here's the aldehyde, so this is propanal. There's that molecule of water that's produced in the first oxidation step, which is what we've got here. And so we only need one mole of oxidizing agent because only one oxidation is taking place.